This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. everyone and welcome to another vlog. Today we're going to be heading out and going to check out the autumn leaves. I haven't really gotten out and explored very much this autumn so I wanted to do that today and just go on a nice sort of lovely solo date out into the autumniness. I can't talk, it's early enough in the morning that my brain hasn't woken up yet. We're going to be heading to a place called Carrick Hill which Tyler and I tried to go to like seven years ago, a really long time ago. We wanted to go and visit this place a very very long time ago but we tried to get there and it was closed that day so this is actually going to be attempt number two for me to go to this place. Carrick Hill is like this historic 1930s manor house I think. It has a garden, it has a little museum inside so I'm excited to go and visit it and hopefully we can check out some autumn loveliness on the way. In addition to that it is actually quite a gloomy day today. I'm probably gonna have to pack my umbrella which is sort of hanging on the clothes area behind me and also a raincoat because I'm nervous it's going to start raining maybe at like 2 p.m. or something but I think if it's not raining if it's like a, if I can find a nice place to sit it might be nice to read this book actually Blood in the Mist by Hope Mirrorlees. I wanted to bring this along with me because this book I've spoken about it a little bit I ordered it seven months ago a really long time ago I ordered it online because I remember listening to Neil Gaiman speak about it in a interview I think I've watched so many Neil Gaiman interviews at this point I think it was an interview and he spoke about this book which is this fairy tale-esque pre Tolkienian fantasy that was written in the 1920s called Blood in the Mist by Hope Mirrorlees and it's about this town that's right next to fairyland. I've read the smallest amount of the book so far. The style is really interesting. I'm very intrigued to see how the rest of the book goes but I think it fits the vibe of where we're going absolutely perfectly. I have my stuff and then I have a raincoat, a spare jumper and an umbrella. Just in case it starts raining we will be fine. We have things. <laughs> Surprisingly, that was a lovely drive. Like the um, autumn leaves are very much coming out in this area and there were so many trees. This particular, I was about to say park then, but no, this house, Carrick Hill, is in a really beautiful part of Adelaide that's like like where a lot of like the rich people are. But um, it's, it's funny because the road infrastructure to get up here is so bad. The roads are really kind of thin and they're like two lane roads and there's always someone parked in the left lane so you can't be in the left lane because if you are, it's like really stressful. You have to change lanes all the time. There's a person walking past the car so I'm just gonna pretend I'm not vlogging for a second. I very much learned my lesson now because I've grew up like driving on country roads and so I never had this problem with like busy busy streets. Regardless we're here let's go have a bit of an explore. Like I've stepped into the English countryside. So lovely and the garden is beautiful and I... Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> I mean, look at this. There are so many hedges to walk through. It's so magical. Kind of like Alice in Wonderland. Okay, I think I'm gonna head up and go grab some tickets to the museum now. <laughs>
of the 1920s and 30s so this house is making me very happy there's little bits of it that feel kind of creepy and maybe it's because I'm walking around by myself and you know the floor is quite squeaky and there's this like I don't know kind of like cool old eerie sounding like 20s or 30s music playing but it's just there's something a little bit beautifully haunted about this place and it's very cool I like it a lot I can't believe I've never been here it's so beautifully preserved and really really cool there are couples getting married down there this is just a beautiful beautiful spot and now we're in the kind of creepy bathroom it's very echoey imagine sitting here in this room and writing letters and not having access to the internet or social media it's just such an interesting idea like it would have been so different and honestly i just can't get over how much i love these windows and how pretty they are second floor. It's quite echoey in here but there's a really lovely view of the gardens so if you're in Adelaide I definitely recommend coming here because it's just stunning. I think I'm gonna head down and go to the cafe now and do some reading of my book. I think picking Blood of the Mist and bringing that with me was a very good decision because it, I think it's very much going to fit the vibe. I, again I love the 1920s and 30s so this is very very cool to me. This is a very cool time in history. I love modernist literature and so um, like particularly Virginia Woolf so yeah this is just such a cool vibe I really love this it's very interesting up on the second floor here there's not really anything aside from this gallery but yeah wow this place is really cool and I'm glad that I came here let's head down now and go to the cafe I can grab my backpack because I had to put it in the cloakroom because you're not allowed to have backpacks um, grab my backpack and we can go to the cafe and do some reading Hello, voiceover Christy jumping on in here to thank the wonderful sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a website builder which allows people to create fabulous, well-designed websites. My website was made through Squarespace. I've been using the platform for almost two years now and I still love it to bits. Squarespace is affordable, it's easy to use and it has loads of benefits including powerful analytics tools, a library full of great templates and fabulous e-commerce features. If you're looking to make a website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Christy Ann Jones to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. This would be such a beautiful place to just come and have a picnic. When I got here before, there were actually a few couples doing that. That orange and almond cake was delicious. It was gluten-free. I was very happy about that. And they put this little syrupy stuff on it that was really good as well. Now, I'm actually going to try and find the children's storybook trail. So I think if I can read the map correctly, I think that's just down here through this magical little tunnel of greenery. Can you tell I'm having a very nice time? It's really lovely here and I'm really enjoying it. There's lots of ravens calling. I am traditionally pretty shit at reading maps so uh no we have to go this way. <laughs> I love this so much. Does anyone else have to do this like turning maps upside down so that you can tell your left from your right? Along this road and then left to the children's storybook trail. <gasps> we got ducks yay! Hello! Hello little ducks! I think this thing here, a pentacute? 
pen pentac. I think that's this thing where the ducks are. I really am bad at, at maps. Thank God for GPS. <laughs> I think we found it. This is the most beautifully garish thing I've ever seen in my life. There's a little hobbit home. Okay, so that's our first storybook reference. Although technically, I did notice when we came in that there was a statue of Momotaro, which is a figure from Japanese folklore. It's like Peach Boy. So he was the boy who sort of came out of the inside of the peach. So that's probably the first story, fairy tale-ish reference. We've got the Hobbit. We've got a whole bunch of frogs. Okay, this one's a little pig and a spider web. So I'm assuming this is Charlotte's web. We have a wolf here. This kind of makes me think of the three little pigs. I think I'm all done with the children's storybook trail. That was very cute. I think the target audience is obviously quite a bit younger than me, but I thought it was a sweet little addition to the sort of bottom corner of the grounds here. Unfortunately, I think I've seen everything now of these grounds and this house. I've had a lovely time. I was going to go straight home after this. It's about two o'clock and I had that cake, but I haven't actually had lunch yet. So I'm thinking of just going and driving up to Stirling. I go there all the time, but it's particularly lovely in the autumn and there's a bakery I really like. So I might, hmm, I might go for a little drive up to Stirling and go continue appreciating the autumniness up there. <laughs> Let's head off to Stirling. Hopefully the big busy highway to get to Stirling isn't too bad. I don't like driving on that highway. It's a bit stressful, but given the time, it shouldn't be too busy. So we should be fine. Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's only 16 minutes away from here. Oh, that's nothing. I was worried it was going to be like half an hour. 16 minutes is absolutely doable. Hopefully it doesn't make me turn right on one of the big scary roads. We should be fine. If you guys can see that, we only have to turn right at traffic lights. In 200 metres, turn right. It's currently, oh my god, 3 p.m. like on the dot, it's exactly 3 p.m. We're in Stirling, which means we should probably go to Matilda Bookshop. I love Matilda Bookshop. Basically, I want any excuse to go there. Um, so we'll pop into Matilda Bookshop, but also we'll go grab something to eat from the bakery, probably. Those are really my only two plans, that and having a bit of a walk in the rain with all of the autumn foliage. I'm going to change out of this cardigan and into this raincoat. I'm so happy that I looked at the weather. Just about stopped raining now, thankfully. I always come back and sit at the same bench when I come here. I am a absolute creature of habit, but I got a sausage roll. Hello, welcome to my... 
other camera. This jacket, I'm just realizing while I film, is so crinkly. Okay, I'm gonna put it down for a sec. So in the end, I took so much footage at Carrick Hill that I um, completely drained my battery. Just to recap on the books, well, sorry, the book that I got from Matilda Bookshop. Context, last year, for the autumnal reading vlog that I filmed last year, I went to Sterling and I went to the Matilda Bookshop and the bookseller there recommended me a book. This book, House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, which is a gothic YA about these three sisters and I absolutely loved it. I've talked about it so much. I think it's brilliant. And that same bookseller was there today. So I asked her if she had any more recommendations and she gave me this one, which is actually by a local South Australian author who lives in the hills. And it's about these two sisters. And she said it had a similar gothic vibe to it as well. Fingers crossed I like this book. I was happy that this was a local author and I'm hoping they like it. Uh, in terms of Blood in the Mist, I'm still very much enjoying it. This story in actuality is not very long so I feel like I can finish it tonight. It is about a week later and I just wanted to jump in and give you guys an update on Lud in the Mist, which I have now finally finished reading. I thought it was going to be a bit of a quicker read than it was in the end. I thought this would probably only take me like a day or two to read, but this book really is a story that's kind of best appreciated a bit more slowly. I think this book is the most similar book I've read in style to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. So if you've read that book and you like that book, I definitely recommend this one. I really wouldn't be surprised if Santa Clark was inspired by this book, particularly because there's so many references to fairies and the fairy roads in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. This story was so interesting in the end. It ended up being a story about this little village called Lud in the Mist, which is in the country of Doromir. I think it's a country, but it feels like kind of English or British and essentially next to Doromir is fairyland and so this town lives in fear of the fairy fruit and they don't like talking about fairies and they've been outlawed. Our main character in this story is Nathaniel Chanticleer. He is the mayor of Lud in the Mist. He, when he's a young man, has a run-in with, I'm trying to work out how to explain this without like explaining the whole thing too much. Um, He basically has a run-in with fairies and magic and he hears it in the form of a musical note and he hears this note throughout his life and it really scares him and startles him and by the time he's middle-aged and he has two children, he's married, he's the mayor of Blood in the Mist. He realizes that this note which has been following him around his whole life, he keeps hearing it again and he starts to get this sort of dark sense that fairies and fairy fruit are making their way into Blood in the Mist and then without wanting to give away spoilers, his family becomes affected by fairies and magic and the fairy fruit and all like the sinister connotations that has in this world. It is wonderfully written, it has such a amazing fairy tale quality to it. Yeah, if you like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, if you like Stardust by Neil Gaiman, I cannot recommend this enough. I think it's so wild that this book was written in 1926 and it's just not talked about. Like it's such a brilliant story and I also wouldn't be surprised if Tolkien had read this because there are a couple little small similarities between this and The Hobbit and just the way the world is depicted, the way Hobbiton is depicted. I think I rated it 4.8 stars when I typed it into my spreadsheet this morning. Um, I thought it was an excellent unique story and a really beautiful story as well. I am now going to sit down and finish editing this video which you guys have just watched. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I had such a lovely day at Carrick Hill um, amongst the autumn foliage. I This is my favorite time of year so it makes me really happy to go outside and enjoy it and especially to capture it for you guys because I know a lot of you live in the northern hemisphere and it is spring for you at the moment so maybe some of you are missing autumn. Also an enormous thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel. Over on Patreon we have a whole bunch of lovely bonus videos, bonus content, writing updates, a whole bunch of stuff so if you're interested in checking out Patreon there's a link in the description down below. Take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.